So we're gonna pour about an ounce and a half of our gin right over the top of the ice and instantly the dry ice starts converting it. Because the dry ice is at the bottom of the glass, it creates these bubbles which have to rise to the top. So now we get little puffs of smoke and this cool bubbling action, and it looks very maniacal. And today we're gonna learn how to use dry ice in cocktails. We've all been to a Halloween party, private party that had uh, dry ice cocktails or a punch that had that cool smoky effect, but there's no reason why we can't use dry ice all year round. It has a great visual impact on your guests. It's fun to work with and it generates sales. A lot of restaurants try to avoid using dry ice in cocktails because they're worried about the liability of guests accidentally consuming the dry ice. And that's because dry ice is made from frozen compressed carbon dioxide at 109 minus Fahrenheit. That's cold. Just to the touch, it can cause freezer burn or frostbite, and we certainly don't want to swallow it. That's a quick trip to the hospital. But I'm going to teach you a trick today on how you can use dry ice in your cocktails every day without concern that your guests are going to accidentally swallow it. First thing we want to do is when we're using dry ice, we have to handle it with kit gloves. And by kit gloves, I mean gloves. You don't want to use those rubber kitchen gloves because the rubber can actually freeze solid and chip and crack and you don't want to touch the dry ice. And you don't want to use latex gloves because it's just too thin. Instead, we want to use canvas or cloth gloves or something made with a silicone, which does not freeze. Now this is ideal. Buying your dry ice is easy enough. Most major grocery stores have it or can get it. It's by the pound and relatively inexpensive. And when working with it, you can either get it in block form or in pellet form. If you're gonna get a block, you can break it up with either a simple hammer and to little extra large marble size pieces, or a nice ice pick is a good way. You can crack up the, uh, crack up the uh, dry ice and then chip it aside to the size that you want. In order to put it in the glass, and keep your guests safe. A little trick I like to use is this little fine mesh loose tea steeping ball. Use it for steeping tea with loose tea leaves. But instead of using loose tea, we're gonna go ahead and take our gloves and put on one nice piece of dry ice, again, about the size of an extra large marble. And we're gonna put that into our fine mesh ball. Whoop, right in the glass. Now, by doing that, this particular one has a nice little clasp on there, which locks it in tight, and it has a little string, a little chain on the side, so we can hang it off the side of the glass. Once that's in there, it's at the bottom of the glass, and as we add liquid to it, that cool smoky effect is gonna rise up to the top. But we don't have to worry about that getting into our guest mouth. We're gonna add ice. And the ice is gonna go right over the top, but it's not going to affect the actual dry ice because it's still contained inside that mesh ball. Once we add our liquid, we're gonna get that cool smoky effect, but we want our liquids to be at room temperature or even slightly warmer because it really enhances the effect and the dry ice will chill down that cocktail to the proper temperature so it's properly balanced. Today, I'm gonna to make a simple gin and tonic. And today we're gonna to use a very specific gin called Empress 1908 Gin. This is made in Victoria, British Columbia, and is infused with butterfly pea blossoms. So it has a natural indigo color. And then when we add a little bit of acidity, like some lime juice or some tonic water, it gives it a natural purple color, which is not only a conversation starter, but looks maniacal and cool with our smoky effect. So we're gonna pour about an ounce and a half of our gin right over the top of the ice, and instantly the dry ice starts converting it, you can see the, the, uh, it's, the smoky effect is already dripping over the side of the glass. And I'm gonna use a little fever tree tonic water and fill it right up to the top. Pour it slowly at first, and you can see I've got this beautiful purple smoking gin and tonic. And also, there's a real significant bubbling effect. Because the dry ice is at the bottom of the glass, it creates these bubbles which have to rise to the top. So now we get little puffs of smoke and this cool bubbling action, and it looks very maniacal. Now this, I've got a little pick your poison glass. It looks like it's something you don't want to drink, and it's absolutely delicious. Instead, you're gonna blow that off the top. A perfect gin and tonic. It looks so cool, you can serve them all year round and it's guaranteed to drive sales. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and share with your friends. And until our next cocktail together, bottoms up.